as you can see here, we are all heavily buffed. The buffs are probably not going to last long, I'll just say that. But before we go into what is very likely to be our doom, because in this part I'm going to be hopefully, because I don't know if the boss is like in the next room or not, but I'm guessing it is because there's a save crystal here, I'm going to be attempting the boss of the secret part of Barheim Passage. Now this, I am not going to make any promises that I'll win this. I'm considering how bad the trek here was, I'm probably going to fail this horribly, but um, we'll see. This is one of the most memorable optional espers to me, but before we do anything else, I'm going to spend some LP because I kind of feel like we're a bit overdue for that, and I sort of want Varn to focus a little bit more on maybe um, this a bit. Maybe get some more HP because, well, I would say it will help, but it might not at all. I think we've really got most of the katanas that we can access, like at this point, but don't know if that magic power increase applies to, like, the magic, like, the damage for katanas that scales off of magic or not. And the Masamune, a very recurring katana in the um, Final Fantasy series. It's actually not the Legendary Sword from Chrono Trigger, that's called Grand Leon in Japanese. I'm not really sure why I called it Masamune in the localization, because it's not... Like, the Masamune in every FF game has, like, always been a samurai sword, so... Yeah, I'm not really sure why they would call it that, but... Anyway, the Masamune is usually a, um, a samurai sword that, uh, in this game, I believe, has a ridiculously high combo attack rate, but... Don't think we even have access to things like mirror mail and stuff right now. We do have the platinum shield though, so I can take that. Actually, the shell shield might not be a terrible idea for this because it gives you a permanent buff. Because again, let's just say that non-permanent buffs are probably not going to last long. Oh yeah, I think this was my plan to go for Shatterheart here. And also that, uh, one of the... Um, also, the fact that, like, both the ultimate weapon and the ultimate, uh, shield are the Zodiac Spear and, um, well, a Zodiac Shield. That's a reference to that Japanese proverb about the spear that can penetrate any shield and the impenetrable shield, thus creating a contradiction. You'll know that proverb if you, I think it's a Chinese proverb originally, like a lot of Japanese proverbs were originally, but you'll know that if you've played um, Rise from the Ashes in the first Ace Attorney game, they talk about that. It's actually where the um, kanji for contradiction come from. It literally means like shield halberd. There's pretty much no point in, and, and again, I don't think we'll be able to access the Ultima Blade at all at this point. Save the Queen, I think, is quite a late sword as well. Oh, we could use the Rune Blade, though, with that. And now we'll start to get more into Great Swords, which do get rid of your ability to have a um, shield, which is unfortunate. I think I'll just take some more Battle Laws and stuff, although... Do you have, like... What is it? Um, forgot what that was even called. The, um... Shear, I think it was. Just kind of a bit preoccupied with the fight that's coming up. Uh, some white magic that we don't have, some more white magic that we don't have, although Faith is going to be really good when we do have access to it. Although this is just like black magic that we don't have. I think I'll just progress a little bit more on the armor front maybe. Get some more magic laws because they always help. Yeah, Black Mage gets a lot of these, but it, it makes sense. I could go for her third quickening there. Where else could I get her third quickening? Battle lore. <laughs> Don't think Ash really wants battle lore. Or there. I got a black mage. There's a swiftness down there I could get. Oh, there's the other Maelstrom's Bolt. But yeah, there's really no reason not to grab this one. So that gives Ash her third quickening. And let's spend the rest of our uh, leftovers on another magic lore. And now finally Pinello. I'm 
I'm really worried that haste is actually a, a chest ability that I don't have yet, because I didn't find the chest for it. If I don't get haste soon, I'll probably end up looking it up. Oh, that's it. I was going to get you bubble. So let's definitely take bubble. And Isuna. I mean, I suppose I could grab that. I don't know if that affects Berserk or not. Holy and Esunaga. So I can get a Battle Law with Resplendence there. I suppose I could take that, because that's a, essentially a quickening bonus. Resplendence there, which won't really do much of anything. Resplendence there, which won't do much of anything. Yeah, I think getting Resplendence here for the, um... Although, since that costs 100... I think that means that I actually need to get it here. Does that mean... do we have... No, Bolfia still doesn't have his level 3 quickening, but we have level 3 quickening on everyone else. That also means that I have to um, now access the save point just so I can restore those quickening spurts. So I do have a rune blade. Doesn't seem to have any element or anything else like that. Vaan's currently using the Platinum Shield. I could go for the Shell Shield just for permanent shell status. Okay, you've got that and the Platinum Shield. You have the Sage's Ring and the Glacial Staff. You have Immunity to Silence, which I might not even need. So I'm leading with Barsh here because he has two Espers. I'm going to go for an Esper summon immediately. Don't even know if this is going to be the boss or not. Yeah, there- oh no, I think this is the boss because it looks like uh, I can see the outline of a circular room there. And there's also an arrow which means an, an access way into another area. Yeah, this is definitely the boss. So after the boss shows up, I'm going to open the menu immediately and talk a little bit about how this fight works because it's interesting. Basically, math, or maths, depending on where you live. The most evil force in the universe. <laughs> also, probably the creepiest Esper. This one represents Gemini. It's a duo of a death god and goddess. Zalera the Death Seraph. The Esper of... actually, it kind of varies. In some sources, he's actually a holy elemental Esper, which kind of makes sense with the whole sort of Angel of Death theme. And in some, he's non-elemental and is just like death-based, and in some, he's darkness. I think he appears in a few of the FF games, uh, mostly the tactic-style ones. But anyway, why I'm opening the menu now is your level is very, very important in this fight. Zalera rarely does anything that, like, outright damages you. Instead, he focuses on using status ailment spells that affect you if your level is a multiple of certain numbers. Level 2 Sleep, Level 3 Disable, and Level 4 Break. If your level is divisible by that number, you get that status effect, although I think you can still protect against it with accessories. The worst by far, see this is why I wanted to be level 31, not level 30, because level 3 disable. Disable pretty much shuts you down completely, so you don't want your level to be divisible by 3. Unless you, unless like Black Belt stop that, because I have a few accessories that make you immune to disable. And honestly, if they do stop that, then... Being level 30 might have been better, because you might notice, level 31. 31 is a prime number. A prime number is not divisible by every anything except itself and 1, which means that, um, yes, knowledge of mathematics actually helps you in this fight. It means that none of, um, his level X spells can hurt me. However, Zalera has a plan for this. Prime numbers are both good and very, very, very bad in this fight. Uh, and also, oh, he summons dead bones, really? I knew he summoned undead, but I didn't think it would be that kind of undead. Okay, so new plan. Barsh, immediately summon. Because he goes into a defensive stance, and then I think if you get him too mad while he's in defensive stance, he goes completely ballistic and then uses his really bad attacks. Uh, Barsh should not be using regen here. I think I'll be... Do I have a dis... Are there even Dispel Motes? Is that such a thing that exists? 
Haska or a Fleck Gun. Oh, I do, I have a lot of spell modes actually. So let's dispel all of those buffs, first and foremost. It's actually pretty advantageous because it means that, um... Uh, you, I, I would rather you be using Thundara than that. Uh, because it actually means that uh, they have, like, instant cast up And reflect, yeah, so, um... They like to reflect Zalera. Now, I don't know if me doing no damage means that, um, I am too low level for this, or if it means that, um... Are you, like, set to foe status equals reflect attack? Because that's kind of bad, because you ignore reflect. I believe, um, you were just immune to something there. Oh no, you're still just casting Fundara. Okay, Flash Arc doesn't seem to be doing anything, so I'm guessing the defensive stance is just, you know... ...an effect of, um... I mean, I don't think my Kuraga's gonna go off. Okay, looks like the Kuraga did go off in time. Hawk Glare. Not sure what that is. Oh, Disable. Okay. Well, it didn't even need that, like, level 3 Disable. Bash just leveled up mid- Bash just leveled up mid-fight! The good news is it means he's no longer susceptible to the prime number thing, but the bad news is it means that he's now susceptible to, um... Enrage. Uh, yeah, I believe after he uses Enrage, he does something. Yeah, kill. So kill is exactly what it says on the tin. Kill just instantly kills you. <laughs> and it also works on Espers. He uses that if you basically annoy him too much with, um... Uh... Vaughn can't even use items as Berserk. If you just... If, if you make him too angry when he's in a defensive stance. Yeah, I kind of forget how this fight works exactly. Okay, he is out of defensive stance though, now that he used kill, which means that... And I also, you might notice I have my gambit set to um, using Phoenix Downs on anybody who um, gets KO'd. There's a good reason for this. Um, that's because of kill, basically. I, I, can, I can say that now. Because kill, as you can tell, yeah, well, it just kills you. So you'll need to be reviving a lot in this fight. Thankfully, he doesn't spam kill, which, spoilers, is what he does when you summon him. Though it only works on certain types of enemies. Oh, yeah, and he can just use the straight-up death spell, too. That has less accuracy than kill. In fact, I'm pretty sure kill is ally guaranteed. And there's level 2 sleep. So um, uh, I believe if your level is divisible by the right number, it's an automatic hit. So Barsh leveling up, as I said, it does kind of screw him over, but um, I can fix that, and everyone else has a prime numbered level, so... When he's out of defensive stand, yeah, there's level 3 disabled, which is not going to affect us, because we're not divisible by the right level. But it's um, level 4 break, there's that, we're not divisible by 4. Oh, Barsh is divisible by 4! Um, again, leveling up mid-fight is a serious problem, uh, so I can gold needle that. You can still cure these status ailments, but... Level 5 reverse? I forgot he had a level 5 attack, but we're not divisible by 5, so that's not going to work. Rever oh, yep, there it is. Okay, so... Oh, I can't take out... I, if I... If I... I should have... Okay. So, um, if I had seen that coming, which I probably couldn't have, because by the time the text is displayed on screen, it's probably already targeting everyone, but, um... Uh... I should have taken out everyone in the party except Barsh, but again, I don't think I would have even had a chance to do that. He does lose health pretty quickly when he's out of defensive stance, however, I'm guessing that after this he goes into defensive stance again. Um, so, this attack name is his, ult this is his ultimate attack, and you can probably tell already what it does. Also, Nightmare Fuel Warning. Instant death to everyone whose level is a prime number. So, um, yeah, if you if you go in here with prime number levels, thinking that you can avoid his uh, more dangerous attacks that way, that's his uh, surprise that he has for you. And is he going... Uh, he's reflected. Is he in defensive stance now? It looks like he might be in defensive stance. And honestly, I kind of feel like the best answer to defensive stance is to just summon and kind of wait things out that way. I think Adramalek has more health than... Um, 
Yeah, braces against attacks. He's in defense mode now. So in addition to maths, this fight is also Yu-Gi-Oh. I forget if that timer is like an actually an instant failure timer or if that's just his defense mode timer. Also, now might be a good time while he's in defense mode to um Phoenix down my fallen party members. Also, right now, I kind of want... It's annoying that you can't edit the gambits on Espers, I think, but um, I would kind of like a drama like to be focused mainly on uh, casting Cura rather than using... Um, rather than using um, attacks, because I know that he's immune to them. In fact, can he target Cura at the reserves? I feel like he probably... Yes, he can. I can, I can use my espers to heal the rest of the party. Probably a decent use of... Oh, flash... Oh, not flash arc. Whatever these things are doing, like, Hawk Glare is disabled. Yeah, so just because you're immune to disable from Zalera doesn't mean you're not immune to disable, period. But basically I'm going to try and, like, wait out his defense mode timer here until he gets angry and uses kill. I like that he only summons dead bones um, when... Oh, Judgment Bolt's like the same name of super move as I think like Ramu or um, some of the other Final Fantasy summons. Ixion had Thor's hammer, not Judgment Bolt. So yes, right now Barsh is not really doing a whole lot of anything because <laughs> of Disable, but... Um, I was like, oh, I'm not going to need to equip Disable Immune Accessories because I'm not divisible by that level. Okay, my Disable seems to have worn off. And now that my Disable's worn off, I can actually equip a Disable Immune Accessory in the middle of battle. Just remembered that. Still blinded, though. Now... I, I, I haven't been paying attention to that timer. I don't know if it's been ticking down the whole fight or just while, you know. Oh, here we go, Enrage. Okay, good, good, that's good. Okay, and Kill is, is thankfully targeted at the Esper, not at Barsh, which is really good because I need Barsh alive for this, obviously. Okay, so now that he's out of, um, now that he's, oh, great. Oh, well, well Ash is dispelling that. Now that he's out of uh, attack mode, though, I kind of want to summon another Esper on him. <laughs> I forget who's stronger, though. Or I could just go for a big quickening chain and just see if I can do a lot of damage to him that way. Because I'm a little bit worried about what that... I don't really know what that timer means, so I'm going to try a quickening chain. Even though at this point, usually... Espers do more than quickenings. Which means maybe I should have taken Ash out of the party and saved her um, Miss Gauge for a summon instead of uh, quickening. Oh, we're going to see Shatterheart here. We might even be able to see Ash's um, level 3. That reminds me a lot of Rowan's, uh, one of Rowan's mystic arts from Tales of Exilia. <sighs> I miss charges. Oh, that, that right there, that shot of Ash is like in a lot of the trailers and a lot of promotional material about this game. I don't think I even got a concurrence out of that. No, I didn't. And, oh, that did okay damage. Hmm. Uh, we are hitting it decently hard, although I believe he's still, well, he's still reflected, but that is about to be dispelled. Oh, he appears to be immune to fire. Is he immune to everything magical? I want to quickly look that up just to make sure, because... Yeah. 
Yeah, he's immune to all magic. So, Ash is actually kind of pointless here. Berserk physical attacks are definitely the way to go. That must be why he's he's dying so quickly. It's it's because it's because you're expected to um like it's because you can't use magic, so they would kind of have to sort of uh, balance things that way. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try and um. Oh, we're shelled. So, uh oh. Well, there's prime level death, and that's gonna put him in defense mode again, isn't it? Defense mode just yet, but uh, hmm. I do I have? Oh, I don't have back uh, Bacchus's wine, do I? Hmm. Oh no, wait. Ah, uh, hang on a minute. That's magical, but it's not like it's not elemental. Is that gonna actually? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Because I, I I now do know that if that time runs out, you actually instantly lose this fight. I could try for another quickening. That was a super lucky mischarge on two different people, wow. Your mind. I should have got in the mischarge with Barsh and that previous one instead of White Whirl. I was paying too close attention to Varns. This is going to get a concurrence. This was 10 hits. I don't know if this will do enough. If this doesn't do enough, I'm throwing my scathe mode. I got it for beating the first demon wall. If there's any time to use it, it's now. Wind burst. Did we have that? No, I think we did get that before. Yeah, we don't have. I don't, don't think we've ever got the lightning one yet. Is he? <gasps> okay, I actually got him. Also, nightmare fuel warning. So it almost makes me feel bad for both of them. <sighs> oh, I was probably not supposed to do it at that level. Balthy is kissing his gun there. Um, and also Balthy is in the victory pose even though he didn't really contribute to that fight at all. But okay, yeah. He doesn't seem to have a lot of health, but that's made up for by the time limit. That's a really stressful fight. Especially since he can just, um... I, I do like how they balanced his kill ability. That it only triggers when he, um... When you get him too mad by attacking him while he's in defense mode. And also, um, you can bait him into using it on an Esper quite easily. Which is something that I didn't really realize when I first played this game. Of course, in that version of the game, Espers were terrible. I didn't really use them in major battles at all. But, okay, I'm heading back to that save point right now. I do not care that you're casting regen on people, Barsh. And then I'm going to go into the license boards to see what kind of things Zalera gives people. I, who did I give Zalera to in my first playthrough? I want to say it was Bolthea? I don't know if it was, though. Oh, okay. So you give Shikari the blood sword and um uh I think that's a sword, okay. And you give Bushi boosted HP. Okay, Varn's looking very tempting right now. 
You give Knight nothing. And Mechanus nothing. Okay, definitely not Bolthier. Fran, uh, Red Battle Mage gets nothing. Archer gets nothing. It's starting to look more and more like it's going to be Vaan. I know Knight gets nothing. Uh, Ulan gets... Nothing. Uh, Black... Oh, Black Mage gets Steel and Poach. That's actually not bad, especially for post-game farming. Okay, Vaan actually does have some competition now. Time Battle Mage gets Aetherlore 3. Mm, not really... I mean, I can probably get that more easily out of other classes, I think. And White Mage gets nothing. Okay, that's actually a bit of a dilemma, because Vaan could get boosted HP along with these two. But Ash getting Steel is actually interesting, and probably... I'll, I'll need to look up how... Because I know the Blood Sword is actually not that great. It's just a pretty weak sword with a chance of Sap, which I've already explained before that Sap isn't particularly good on enemies. But the, um... The Karkata. It's an upgraded blood sword added to the Zodiac versions. And instead of sap, it inflicts Confuse to all those it strikes who are not immune. Alright, this is Bushy, not Shikari, but anyway, it makes uh, this, the same difference. However, knights also get this naturally. So I would just be giving Vaan um, a weapon that some of my other characters could already access normally. Whereas, there would be no other way for me to give Ash Steel and Poach. This is actually really tricky because I like the idea of Vaan having an Esper. He doesn't have one, and I'm not sure what others would be good on him, but... But these skills are really, really good for farming stuff, and... I think overall that's probably the best choice, because again, like, the, um, the Karkata I can actually use on my knights anyway, and I have two knights. And with that, I can get Steel on Ash. Okay, I was gonna try and, like, go back into the other areas and go, Oh, I'm gonna get my revenge against those undead by using Zalera, and then, yeah. So, Zalera as an Esper is interesting, because, um, his main form of attack is that skill simply called Kill, which, being instant death-based, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work on undead. In fact, I think it actually heals them, so... Yeah... I forget if Zalera himself is considered undead, but I actually doubt it. I think he's supposed to be more of an angel of death than an actual um, undead creature. So now we've beaten Zalera, though. An elixir. I, I already had two of those, I just realized. They restore all HP and MP, but not to the entire party. In a reverse mode. Forgot to explain this during the fight, but Reverse makes healing damage you and damaging heal you. And there are some interesting enemies later on in the game that will actually cast Reverse and then try and heal you. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, this leads into the, um, uh, the Gar Garamsythe Waterway. Could we have even gotten here, like, before and skipped straight to Zalera? I don't actually think so. But some players like to actually use this opportunity to go straight for the Esper in the Garam Scythe Waterway. I think I've already fought enough optional Espers, and um, despite the enemies here being great Malboros, I actually think they're safer to run past than um, the enemies in the Barheim Path. I mean, there is Bloodwing, but you saw how badly I was doing against the enemies in there. I think I'm actually going to leave Bloodwing for later. It feels weird fighting an Esper uh, and then leaving immediately and um, saving the hunt monster for later but 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 I think I'll do that while we're in here I, I can just show this you can use the sluice gate key to control the water levels in here and there's a bit of a puzzle for that that leads you down there which is where you get the Esper in this place however I I am not going to be going for that right now. I, I'm going to be continuing the main story a little bit because I've already done, like, so much side content right now. But I got two optional espers. That's more than I thought I would end up getting. And out of them, a Adramalek gave me more trouble than Zalera did. Of course, getting to Zalera was an enormous pain in and of itself. But, but yeah, the actual fight with Zalera didn't really go all that badly. 
I, I still really love the concept of that fight, though. Just, I like to call it Death by Math, or Death by Maths. I, I feel like sh if Sho Minami Moto from The World Ends With You, um, he, he makes a lot of Final Fantasy references anyway, he's probably aware of this. Um, <laughs> he would really get along well with Zalera. I know Zalera and the other, the, the woman with him, have their own sort of backstory uh, in the, I was about to say, compendium in the BCRE, but I, I like to think that one or both of them were mathematicians in a past life, because that would make sense. But yeah, those level divisible abilities, I know they're actually pretty broken in FF5, so much so that there's a speedrun category called No Math. Because I think there's like a status called like level something old, which halves the level of anything that, or something like that, uh, that that's vulnerable to a certain, like that is divisible by a certain number, and then you can do crazy stuff with that, and then it, it sounds pretty interesting. But with that, uh, I want to show Zalera. I want to demo Zalera against something. Who's going to be my willing test subjects? Guess some things on the Giza Plains. And I do like that even if it was using himself as a human shield, Zalera, not Zalera, um, Adramalak did get to redeem himself against, um, Zalera. So, let us summon Zalera the Death Seraph. And see what he can do for us. He and she, because it, it's, it's, because they're Gemini, they're actually a pair. They have Cura, they have Warp, they have Death, obviously, and they also have Kill and Condemnation. Unfortunately, they don't actually have Prime Level Death, probably because that would be too broken against basic enemies, maybe? But against anything that's not immune to death, Kill just does what it says on the tin. I'll need to look up the exact specifics of kill, but against weaker enemies, I mean, I suppose against weaker enemies, you can just, you probably can kill them fast with regular attacks, but, um... Is it a decent way to chain things? And it's also just kind of, you know... Kind of fun to <laughs> just have an attack that is so on the nose as this, just kill. In fact, the animation reminds me a lot of um, Noctis's wing attack that he gets later on in Final Fantasy XV, although that's actually just the death spell. Uh, okay, well, Zalera's going to use Kill, but I can instead maybe try and have him use... I can try just regular death, even though that costs MP, or Ash would just instantly... See, again, weaker enemies, much more efficient just to finish them off um, with normal attacks. But, but Zalera at least makes you feel really powerful, <laughs> and sometimes that's all that matters. Yep, death, uh, death worked on that thing. Now, does kill work against elementals? Yeah, it does not work against elementals. And I'm guessing they're probably immune to death as well. Oh, and he's gone. Because of uh, Ash going down. Elementals are still a threat, even um, in lower leveled areas. I'm just going to try and show what Condemnation does. Probably against basic enemies, because um, the elemental might be immune. I mean, it's going to be really disappointing if it turns... Yeah, I'll just use it against these things, because I, I know it will work on them. Also, I'm going to give a preemptive nightmare fuel warning for this as well. I forget exactly what it looks like, but I remember it looking pretty terrifying. Yeah, the scream, I remember that now. Was that a Kefka laugh? That sounded like a Kefka laugh. And that does... <laughs> yeah, being a random damage ability, it's... Re 500 damage doesn't even kill enemies in an area where we are we are way overleveled. 
Yeah, random damage ability is usually not the best things in Final Fantasy or most games. Uh, it's a shame. Even when they have a really cool animation like that, it's just... Why? I mean, I can see why they didn't give him prime level death, like, as an actually usable thing while he's on your side, but it still, it would have been kind of fun. Maybe they should have given him something like Vanille's, Vanille's death in FF. I guess, like, I know that this is, this is kind of, um, a weird way to sort of give this tangent, like, at the end of an episode, but, um, while we're here and talking about Zalera, I personally think that Vanille's death spell in Final Fantasy XIII is the best, um, apart from like Hummer and Mudo in Shin Megami Tensei, but it's one of the best forms of instant death I've seen in any JRPG, in that it does massive damage even if its chance of instant death doesn't go off, and its chance of instant death is made higher by the number of debuffs on the enemy, so you actually have some control over it, and it works on some very useful things to insta-kill, like adamantoises. Um, and also even the final boss, but only if it's staggered, I think. Uh, so yeah, I really love Vanille's death ability in 13, and maybe if they made Zalera's ultimate attack work like that, like instant death with chance based on status ailments, or, um, I don't know, maybe the chance is increased if their level is a prime number or something, like, rather than being guaranteed. That would be cool, because, like, as it stands, condemnation is kind of a joke. But, on that note, here we'll leave you, and next time we will head out to... Arcades, finally. See you all then, for the long path to the Empire.